Hi, welcome. My name's Dan and this is going to be a series of videos I'm recording for my Husqvarna Automower Challenge. The purpose of these videos are to give unbiased insights from myself in terms of how I found using the Husqvarna unit, the good, the bad and the ugly. So, without further ado, let's have a quick talk about the property that I've got the Husqvarna installed at, at the moment. You can see from the top that actually we've got quite a large garden. We've got a large front garden and a slightly longer but more narrow garden towards the rear of the property. And they are joined by a small passageway down the side which has a gate in the middle. And then what I've done is I've split the, the garden into zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. And the reason I've done that is each zone has its own problems at the moment um, and it's really important I think to highlight the different issues that I've ha been having so that then we can track those over the coming weeks and months to see whether there's any improvement. So let's have a look at how we've got the Husqvarna installed. We had to have an external plug socket installed and unfortunately ours was a little bit too high for the power unit so we've actually had to balance that on top but we will get around to screwing that onto the wall eventually. Now the main part of installation all revolves around the main charging base that the Husqvarna automower lives on. This charging base is where your automower lives when it's not mowing and it's also where the various guide wires uh, live and connect to to get their power from. So the way that the automower works is you have a boundary wire installed and you also have guide wires installed. The boundary wire going around the outside of your garden and the guide wire going down the middle. Now as you can see from the video it's more or less impossible to see where the wire was installed and you really have to get on your hands and knees and be filtering through your grass with your fingertips to find it. And what I've done is I've put together a diagram of part of the garden with the red wires indicating the boundary wires and the blue wire indicating where the guide wire is. The purpose of the guide wire is so that when the Husqvarna unit is deciding that it needs to go back to its base, whether it's because it's finished cutting or because it needs to recharge, it will initially start looking for this guide wire in the middle of your garden. And once it finds it, it will randomly meander down it as to not leave tire tracks until it reaches back to its charging station where it will then dock itself. It's a really handy feature because if you have quite a large garden like we do, when the auto mowers run out of battery, maybe because it's been coming all morning and it's still not finished, it can find its way back, it can charge itself up. Once it's recharged, it can then just resume from where it left off and carry on mowing the grass, which is just brilliant. Now I mentioned before how we were going to monitor certain zones in the garden so I'm going to start off by showing you zone 1. Now as you can see from this video here's some trimmings that the Husqvarna's will be taken off and you can see it's very very mossy and where there is grass most of it's dead so let's see if that changes. Now moving on to zone 3 which is the larger part of the rear garden what we'll find is actually the grass is very kind of, I'm not too sure of a technical term, um, certainly a lot of clover. There's a little bit more grass but there's a lot more foreign plants uh, and it is a little bit patchy but overall where the grass is the health of it is quite good but here we can see some more patches. And finally if we have a look at zone 2 which is immediately behind the main house you'll see that Actually, generally speaking, uh, not too many foreign plants, got some daisies, uh, but mainly quite patchy. So we'll see if that improves as well. Something else that I did, because we only got the mower installed yesterday, was I've had it going literally 24-7 since. So it's about an hour 15 charging cycle, and when it's finished charging, it takes itself out and does about two and a half hours mowing before going back for another charge. And this is a video I took from inside the house, of it mowing and we had it mowing throughout the night and I can tell you we didn't hear a peep out of it. It really is so quiet. The only time that I've even been able to hear it is if there isn't anything else going on in the house, no traffic and I sit there and really listen out for it. And naturally it does get a little bit louder the closer it gets to the house but 
I will be confidently having it cut throughout the night when it only needs to do a little bit of cutting. But we're leaving it going 24-7 for a couple of days just to kind of get the whole of the garden cut down and nice and even. So, that brings to an end episode 1 of the Husqvarna Automower Challenge. And what I'm hoping to do is post a new episode roughly every two weeks, documenting how the mower's been getting on, hopefully to have some time lapses and some before and after photos of pieces of the grass to show whether it's been having an improving effect, also to share any challenges that we've had during the time in between. And then also what I'll be doing is posting a lot of shorter videos concentrating on certain features of the auto mower, such as security uh, and lots of other features like that. If you've got any questions or if you're really interested in anything, then just post a comment on the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.